actually go on YouTube to hear yourself? No. Because you'll be like the famous YouTube guy that, well, you should if you say it enough, right? You want my own one? Well, I'm just saying, if you go on YouTube, you might even hear yourself. So, um, so the next step is basically we're trying to get some key features out of this graph. So if we look, we haven't even talked about key points yet. All we've done is asymptotes and invariants. So if we wanted to talk about what we would do on a normal graph, if you saw this V here, what, what points do you think you'd want to choose if we were doing any other kind of transformation? Like what points would you think are important to transform by hand if it was this graph here on the left? Yeah, we could do that. Um, there's three points that most people I think here would, would, would pick. Yeah, so the middle point here, that's definitely one that most people would say is important, and these endpoints. So we do the same thing when we do a reciprocal. Anything that looks important to you, like if it's the minimum part of a graph here, maybe a maximum part of the graph here, anything you think is a key feature that deserves some recognition, we're going to do the third step is actually apply reciprocal to it. So let's recap the first three steps on this graph. So first is, where are the vertical asymptotes going to be on the final graph? What's the location for, if this is our original, okay, that's my original graph, where will I expect to see x asymptotes? James? Yeah, you're right. So here's the intercepts right there. That's where I'm looking. Where are my x intercepts? If it equals zero here, it's going to be divided by zero in the reciprocal. So that means I've got an asymptote there and right there. Okay, step one's done. Where would we expect to find invariant points? First of all, how many do you think there are? Jesse? I found four. Good, okay, let's find out where, where are those four points. Someone give me one of them? Coordinates like numbers. No. Tom, do you see any uh, invariant points there? Yeah, that's one of them. Okay, so Tom's mentioning this one here. And can you pick one more? Hard to see. Yeah, positive 3, 1 is also one. So we'll put them on the graph here negative 3, 1, positive 3, 1. The other two are right here. At negative one. Okay, so all the invariant points are done. Steps one and two. So any points now that we think are important? So the ones that we tried, um, there's one in there at the minimum, so let's put it down at zero, negative two. And here was a couple of the maximums that we talked about. So we have to take these points now and figure out where will they be in the reciprocal. So where would you expect to find 0, negative 2 if we took the reciprocal of that point? So if I, all I did was apply this transformation, this reciprocal one here, to the point. Nothing else. Where would you expect to find that point? Yeah, that's right. It's at negative a half. So when we do the reciprocal, it's going to go to zero, negative one half. So I'll expect it's going to be here now. Okay. And then what about six four and negative six four? Where would you expect those to go when we uh, take its reciprocal? So how about negative six four? Where would you expect to see that? reciprocal transformation do? Can you help them out, Robbie? What's the 6 and 1 fourth, yeah. 
So these are going to move to their reciprocals. Okay. So I should plot those on this graph as well. At six and one quarter, and six and negative six and a quarter. So we're going to leave this graph just for a minute. We'll come back and we'll finish it off in just a second. But uh, in order to finish it off, we need to know about the fourth step, the last step. Okay. Fourth. Uh, so the fourth step is probably the only one you can't do just based on some, you know, uh, what's, the, what's the word I'm looking for here? Like formula of just do this and get your answer. You have to think a little bit to get it. So let's just say, for example, we were looking at some values and their reciprocals. Okay, point zero zero one has a reciprocal of 100. Anybody know what the reciprocal of point 0.1 is? So I'll finish this off. Oops, too many zeros. Point zero 0.01. So here's the big idea. As values become larger, the reciprocals become smaller. Yeah, not so bad, right? Okay, so when one is increasing, the reciprocal is decreasing. So let's take a look at this time as values become smaller. Does anybody know what 50 is reciprocal is? Yeah, if you can follow the pattern. How about 5? Yeah, 0 0.2. So here's where we end up. The values we get, as the values become very, very small, <coughs> the reciprocal becomes larger. Yes, massive. In some, in some cases, as big as you want it to be. Oops. There's an R in larger. Okay. So now let's take this idea and see if we can figure out where the graph is going to end up that we just worked on. Okay. So the reason we want all this stuff that looks kind of like the skeleton of a graph is it'll help us piece to piece figure out what's going to happen in the graph. So for example, when I go from this point to this point on the reciprocal, so here to here, then if it is decreasing in the original, what do you think is going to happen? It's going to increase, right? So this time it's going to get bigger. And the thing is, it gets very, very close to zero. So those numbers become extremely tiny, like point zero 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 one. Right. When we take its reciprocal, now it's enormous. It's a number that's huge, like more atoms than that's in the universe. Eventually it would, you know, if it was allowed to divide by zero, it would eventually make its way all the way up and be infinite. So there's an arrow there just because it just keeps going higher and higher. Tiny values here, huge values there. Now when we're on the other side of the graph and we're here, what kind of number what kind of number is it here? What's the big difference from the moment we just did to where we are now? It's negative. So this is a very, 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 very tiny negative. So when we take its reciprocal, it's now a very, 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 very huge negative. So we need to start with a huge negative. So it could be all the way down there. But uh, huge negative before it connects up to that next invariant point. So see if you can finish off the second half of the graph. Okay. Um, so in this part, you can also use the clues from the graph. Where I'm at right here, I'm just about to look at these values. That's the same values as here. So if I'm noticing it's decreasing for the first half, it's going to be increasing in the reciprocal. Increasing in the graph here means it's going to be decreasing when I hit the graph here. And as it keeps increasing, this graph is going to keep decreasing. Now, these values here, very, very small positives. It will be very, very large positives. And I can finish the graph off. Looks like this. from the top 
see if you can do it. The four steps are 